All right, what's up guys? VV back with another video. And in today's video, guys, we're going to be checking out just a few games on The Sim. Pretty chill video for Monday. Nothing too crazy. No crazy theory crafting or anything like that. Uh, and we're going to hop into these games just pretty much right away. I don't want to waste anybody's time here. Let me uh, turn the volume off, put it at 2x speed, and I'll show you guys the... Um, there we go. I will show you guys the deck list after the video. So, so I was messing around with Isho lately, right? That's, that's the... Uh, <laughs> The segue right into the video and i thought you know the deck has a lot of potential still i think it does struggle in t like how do i say this perona just came out and i think there's not enough reason to run isho over perona that's the crappy part i'm just gonna just tell you guys straight up uh but i still think this deck is pretty good and where it does it has the opposite advantages to Perona, right? Perona can tap down your opponent's characters that cost four or less. Well, with this deck, you can untap your characters or set your characters as active that cost five or less. So, so you know, it, it does have like that that inverse uh, synergy. And in this case, it, it, you know, you, you need to combo it accordingly. Now, we can still run cards like X Drake because notice I'm running almost a pure Navy version here. Every card in my hand is Navy. Um, but we can, we're going to want to run cards that we can benefit from. Like, for example, on, on the board here, is this in 2x speed? It, sound, it seems like it's going really slow. It is. It is in 2x speed. Notice we put down the Kuzan. Well, against decks that don't have uh, just straight-up hand removal, like in-hand removal, Kuzan is just going to feast, right? Like, I can, I can just continue to use him over and over and over again. Um, and, and like I said, I will show you guys the, the deck list after the video. And there's a few things I came across that are, are like... Like for example, the Marine Forge in my hand, they were never incredible. And notice I just literally just trashed one with my with my six call Sakazuki. Now, one thing I will say is Sakazuki is a menace, man. Sakazuki, I haven't played with this card in a while, and he is just an absolute threat. He comes into play and KOs anything that came before him. Because he's a six call seven K that KOs a five or less. So if you're playing him on curve, you're KOing anything that came into play before him, unless it's like a Borsalino, obviously. Okay, so swing seven at face. I, I believe you just took it. Uh, swing five with Kuzan, minus four to your Luffy. Now he's a three cost. We'll see what he does. I'm trying to bait him into, into resting this, uh, this seven cost Luffy. Like, I dare you to rest this Luffy. So I'll just swing five a bunch of times here. And let's see what he does. Notice I have six Dawn left. So I'm going to be able to swing five, swing five. I just kept swinging five. I'm going to swing five with my leader as well. And then play out my, my um, what's his name here, X-Drake. And be able to, to uh, get him that way, and then still have one dawn left to stand up one of my one of my other guys. Well, since he did not do what I wanted him to, I'm just going to have to go Trafalgar Law and play out a blocker. So play out two blockers. I'm still standing up my Kuzan, so we're good. And you see, we put him in a little bit of a predicament there. He could not use his seven cost seven K to block even a single five K attack. So so that was very nice. Uh, but the game's far from over, right? My opponent has. Seven cards in hand, two life left, half a board. So we'll have to see what he gets here. So he swings for six, and it did not reveal what he got. I think that was some type of glitch in, in the uh, sim. I could be wrong, but I don't remember it showing what he got there, unless I just missed it. So he swings six to me. I give him a 2K counter. I want to keep my board healthy and my life pretty healthy. See, so now he's going to swing 10 into my seven. Okay, that I do want to try to get out of. And plus I have a Gecko Moria in hand that I want to get some value from as well. He uh, backlights my, uh, what was that he just did? He, he did backlight to KO my Trafalgar Law. Was he rested? Did I miss something? Let me see something. <clears throat> oh, he used two of them. Okay, I was like, guys, did <laughs> I must be going crazy. So he used two backlights to rest and then KO my Trafalgar Law. I'm going to take five to the face here. He's got one Dawn active. That's weird. Okay, his turn's not over. My bad. <laughs> so he's probably going to do something with that. Nope, ends up not doing anything with it. And now it's my turn again. So now I can at least get some value from my um, from my X-Drake. However, I might want to use my Gecko Moria here. I can't exactly remember what I do. I think I try to eat up some cards from his hand here and eat up his board. So seven into his five there. Let's see what he gives me. There's no way he should block out of this. There's absolutely no reason to do so. Uh, but he might. We'll have to see. Oh, he, that's what he was saving the one Dawn for. That makes sense. Uses it to... I think that was supposed to stand up a character. Let's see if he actually does. I don't remember. It's a plus 2K. And I'm waiting on for, for him to counter out. And then he doesn't stand a character up. 
So that might have just been a uh, user interface type of error where he, he didn't choose things in the right order. Because one thing I will warn you guys of on the sim is if you don't do things in the right order, it will mess up. It, it, it can mess up. And then he just taps out from there. I think after he made that mistake, let me pause it. There's no recovering from that mistake. And even if he had not made that mistake, I think I was completely fine to win this game. Because I'm standing up my Kuzan every turn. I'm getting KO effects off with that X-Strike this turn, even if, it, even if he did stand up as Luffy or whatever he could have stood up. And then I've got a nice board. I've got Gecko Moria coming in the next turn. Pretty convincing. And I will say that Gecko Moria does add, um, uh, you know, a lot of value to this uh, black and green Isho deck. Okay, so let's blow this up. Let's put in 2x speed. Volume's off. We're good. And here we go. So now we're going against the other black green deck in the format, right? We're going against black green Perona. And, you know, I will say this. Like, the, the ability to stand my guys up is pretty nice considering the fact that it's my five cost cards. So it's just out of range of Perona, and, you know, I can still get the value from it. But I will say this, you know, they do have cost, re of course they have cost reduction in um, in Perona. So I actually play out my Kuzan here on purpose, because it's like, okay, I'm going to make you tur turn your entire board sideways, or all of your Dawn sideways, just to take out my Kuzan. Otherwise, I would have 2k'd out for sure. No problem. I've got six Dawn this turn. I've got a lot of options. I'll swing five, and it looks like I'm just going to KO this baby five. Trash one of these, um, uh, what are they called, Rosanantes from my hand. And now I can bring that back later with a Gecko Moria. Uh, this card is just so good, guys. Now, now there's just a threat on the board. Okay, now he does have the, he had to use a, a 2k counter and a character uh, removal just to get that off the board. Can only swing for six after that. I counter out. I top deck a Gecko Moria. Seems really good. So let's see what we get here. Play that out, get Kuzan, get Rosanante. I'm fine with him. You know, I pr I don't have a problem with him doing what he did there because he tried to KO my, my Kuzan that way. I can I can save it with the Rosanante because he will save any rested character of yours. Okay, then he swings six. I'm, I'm obviously not giving him Kuzan for six. Not giving him for six again. So now I have my Kuzan. Like, maybe I could have let him go there. I'm not going to lie. Like, there's probably a situation where I could have just let him get KO'd. But what's the point of... if? Like, notice I, ha I still have six cards in hand, six cards in hand to his five, four, and I've got two characters on the board to his four. I just took one out, and now I can do whatever from here. Garp with Isho is very, very nice, guys. It is very nice. And here I go again, just trashing. Like, after a while, your, your six cost Sakazuki just becomes the card you, you trash to use your other effects. So swing five here. Play out this guy. Um, swing five. I don't remember what I do here. Do I play out? That's interesting. Oh, I pulled back my... That's right. So this... I tried something cheeky this game. I pulled back my Gecko Moria with my Trafalgar Law, then played out a Rosanante. He freezes my board. I'm not exactly, you know, I'm not exactly devastated by that. You know, I tapped out my Rosanante, unfortunately. Swing six at face. I will take that. Swing five more at that guy. I can just tap down my uh, Trafalgar Law. But I'm wondering if I should here... You know, because I need to clear up a spot on the board anyway if I want to play my Gekka Moria this turn. It, it becomes kind of a headache, but, but it, it, you know, I'm still learning this deck, guys. I've only, I think I've only played this deck like four or five times now, uh, but, but it seems pretty good. It does seem pretty decent. Um, okay, so my turn here, I, I think I drew a, another x strike for the turn. I've got a lot of options here. I'm not worried about KOing his Ryuma <clears throat> because, you know... I'm going to get the card back with uh, Kuzan. And that's why I, I thought... I'm surprised uh, I didn't actually just... Never mind. I was going to say, maybe I should have done the Rosinante, but maybe, I'm, maybe I misread that card. Or unless I just did it really quickly. Let me pause something real quick. Sorry, guys. I do have to check. I thought Rosinante would save... Rosinante. I thought it would save my Kuzan from that. Um, but either way, I was going to get it back with Gekka Mori, if not. Uh, if Yeah. Opponent's turn, if your rested character would be KO'd, you may trash this character instead. I don't know. Maybe I did that. Maybe I clicked it really quickly. Let's see. Because I feel like it didn't give me an option to do it. Let's just check real quick, guys. So swing there. Yeah. K oh, opponent's turn. Guys, I'm, I'm losing it. I'm absolutely losing it right now. So either way, I get it back with Gecko Moria. I get to draw a card from that. And I'm, I can't decide if I want to use the other, the other effect to, to play out of two costs. I decide not to. And into turn, whoops, did y'all see that, guys? Into turn, I, I stood up my um, tr my Trafalgar Law with the leader effect. Okay, back into it. Sorry about that, guys. 
So I'm feeling pretty comfortable at this point. I, I don't really care the fact that he has a 10 cost 10k because that's all he has. Suru's not a threat. Like, yes, he technically could throw 5 Dawn on there, but I will gladly 1k out of that. 10 into 6 there, I'm just going to give my Rosinante. He KOs my ex, my, excuse me, my, uh, my Kuzan. I think that Kuzan's been like KO'd and revived like three times now. Prona, make me trash a card. Sure, you can have you can have my Marine Ford. Six into my Garp. I'm, no way I'm giving him Garp, right? There's no way. And honestly, guys, I've seen him use, what, three 2Ks this game? So we're, we're just going to go nine into life uh, four times when he only has two life. So, you know, here you go. 13 at life. And he doesn't have it, so pause. All he, now, he had gas in hand. If, if I couldn't have finished him there, I'd have been in trouble. Because two Gecko Morris, that would have gave him a long game ahead of him. And one thing I will say about the about One Piece is you need to know when to commit to lethal versus when you need to stay back and defend. Because notice, I did have a defender in hand. I had a 2k counter. I had a way to remove one of his characters if I could rest it. I, I had options. And I even could have gone for his board, right? I could have tried to take out the Doflamingo to get cards out of hand and play more defensively. But why would I do that when I can swing 9k actually four times? Like, actually four times. So there we go. Now I got one more game for you guys. Hang on one second. Let me find it over there. Okay. And this time we got a Yamato deck. So just straight up green decks today, guys. Nothing but green opponents here. Okay. And this is against Yamato. Um, I think I made revisions along the way. I'm just going to show you guys the most recent deck list that I have saved. I think I made a few revisions along the way. Like, for example, I don't think I had Borsalino in those first two games, and I know I did not have Garp in the first game. Or if I'm not, I'm pretty sure I did not have Garp in the very first game. And I think I made adjustments along the way, and this, most re this last game here is the most recent one with the most updated deck list. Because I think I added the Peronas. Um, I actually like Perona a lot. I think most people do. I think Perona's just very strong. So, okay, he played out um, the... Uh, sorry, guys, I gotta catch up. So, he played out Mihawk. This will play out a four-cost slash character from your hand, even though it's only three-costed. And he played out the uh, Cracker, and then I swung five into it, and he didn't defend it. I guess he thought I was probably gonna Ryuma it, which which is a legitimate... Um, <laughs> that's a legitimate concern, and it's something I probably should add to the deck, but I don't think I'm running Ryuma currently. So, that was, uh, you know... That was a heads-up play by him, but unfortunately, you know, <laughs> I didn't even have that follow-up, so I followed up with a Borsalino instead. So I kind of got the best of both worlds there. Unless he just didn't have any counter in hand. That's another possibility. He plays out Arlong, trashes a reject, makes it where my Isho cannot attack this turn, but I'm not too worried about that, right? This is not, you know, Isho does not have an on-attack effect, so I just don't get to swing five for the turn with him, but I still get to use his effects, like standing up Borsalino here. Play out this guy. Oh, do I? I think I might just establish a blocker and I don't even worry about the Borsalino. Yep, because this is Yamato, right? I would love for him to swing into my Borsalino so I don't have to deal with a 9k attack to my face. Right, that, that's the logic there. And if he does go 9k to my face for whatever reason, I'll use my Rosinante. Unless he can rest my Rosinante, right? There's there's a lot of things here. So he plays out Kikinojo. This is the pretty aggressive version of Yamato. He, he's going to go 8 into my, um, what's his name? My uh, Borsalino. And in my, I just block out with the Rosinante, and now I can 1k counter out of this. Not worried about that at all. That that actually went perfectly into my favor here. Okay, so at this point, I've got 8 Dawn to work with. I can be pretty aggressive here. I'm going to swing 5 at face. Because here's the thing, I can swing into his life pretty comfortably because he can only get a Satori trigger, which will cost him a card from hand, or a... Um, is it in 2x speed, guys? Yeah, it is. Okay, it's just taking a while. All he can get is a Satori trigger or a Cracker trigger, and those cost cards from hand. He cannot get Kikinojo because I have four life. You can only get Kikinojo if you have three or less life. Okay, so he got a 200 million volts of Maru, so he's in a, he ends up trashing two cards from hand to gain a life back. No problem. Hit that guy with your x ray Stand up my Borsalino in a turn. That feels nice. I will say that's the thing on Isho that does feel really nice, is just flooding the board with these four and five cost characters. Some have blockers, some have KO, some have cost reduction. And then you can just pick and choose which one to, to stand up at the end of the turn. You can bait people into your, uh, your, your blockers and things like that. It does feel very good. Okay, so he's going to go nine into Kuzan. I'm not worried about that one bit. Six in the face. I would like to gain. I would like to draw a card at this point, right? He goes Momonosuke to put to put the Kikinojo on top, but I think it's probably a little too. It's 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 basically too little, too late at this point, right? I can just swing into him very aggressively here. Stand up my blocker in a turn like it's nothing. Okay, he gets Kikinojo. I'm like, well, no, that's you know, 
that's not going to do it, right? I'll just swing six into here, swing six into here. And now at this point, I was going to say, I don't have any incredible follow-up. I can at least take out the Mihawk, and then I'll play out brand new, get a 2K counter. That was lucky. And then stand at my um, Orselino. I, I've got three life, a blocker, and what, 6K in hand, or 4K in hand, excuse me, 4K counter in hand, feeling absolutely comfortable in this position here. Now, you never know, though, right? He could have a Hody Jones and this, that, and the other. But but realistically, Hody Jones still won't win him the game here. So, look, it looks like he's going to go, yeah, he's got three on his leader. That seems like Hody Jones to me. It, it, that just doesn't matter, right? Because because I can take the two two double attack from what's-her-face here from, from uh, Yamato and still have whatever I draw and the, the 4K in hand. So, let's see what he does. Six, okay. He does have Hody Jones. He should have been way more aggressively going against my life there because now I'm not going to let him have my whole board. So in this situation, I'm going to, I think I just counter out of this because, or no, no, well, I still have, excuse me, I still have the uh, the x ray. Yeah, so now it's basically nothing he can do to win. Let me pause it and explain my logic there. The reason I countered out, countered out of the, the Borsalino was that would force him to attack with his uh, Momonosuke to KO the, the Borsalino if he even could, right? That would open up the path for me to attack twice. It, it was over pretty much no matter what. I actually, I actually could have just let him go there and swung, you know, he, he has two cards left in hand, right? So I can swing nine, nine, and well, I'd, I'd have to mess around with it. Maybe like eight, eight, and seven or something like that. I, I don't know the exact math. It made sense to just counter out completely there. Okay, let me go ahead and get out of here, bring this up. So this is the deck that I was running. Um... I, I think I added two Kobe's at the very end. I don't even know if I had it in that last game, but everything else should be exactly the same. And I think I took out like one Sabo for one and one Gecko Moria for the for the other um, Kobe. I was just trying to get some kind of tricks back here. And after messing around with it, I think I think I should try to find a way to get Rebecca in the deck. Like maybe go down a Trafalgar Law, uh, go down one Kobe, just have one, you know, just literally just a single Kobe in the deck. And go up to like two or three Rebecca's. Not too many, actually, because because Gecko Mori is the main, you know. Gecko Mori right now is what makes a lot of the black decks still run in this in OP06. Like it, it alone is what's fueling those decks to have the power that they do, I think. Oh, I do have Rebecca's right in front of my face, guys. That that's hilarious. I, it's been a long day. I was gonna say, I know I added Rebecca's. That that's what I was tripping out about, even though we didn't see him in those last games. I added I think I added Rebecca at the very end. Now I'm starting. Now I'm starting to question myself. Question myself if they were in the other games. And I'm sorry, guys, if they were. Like I said, it's it's Monday. I just got back from spring break. I don't mean to make excuses, but it's been it's been a long day. Um. But anyway, you guys tell me what y'all think in the comment section below. Is there a reason to run Isho over Perona? I know I did beat a Perona in this you know in this video, but you guys know this is just the sim. It's not like 100% science or anything like that. Some of it might be preference. And honestly, I think we can literally just copy paste over the Perona deck on top of Isho's and just go from there. But I will say this, I don't think there's a, a big reason to do that because we can take advantage of a card like Garp and they cannot. I mean I mean they can run Garp, but we get to stand him up at the end of the turn with at the end of the turn with our leader's effect. Uh, we can we can both run the full navy package like you see here. Uh, but yeah. That you know I guess it comes down to preference. I do think Perona is slightly stronger uh, because her effects are free. But Isho, <clears throat> Isho can stand, you know, stand up your characters at the end of the turn. So cards like Trafalgar Law, which are which are very good blockers as is Sabo, Borsalino, X Drake, Kuzan, especially. Y'all saw I got to get a lot of value there. Like you know, you swing in with Kuzan or these other characters, and then being able to stand them at the end of the turn is really really strong. And no, obviously you cannot stand up Gecko, Moria, or Sakazuki because you can only stand up a five cost or less. But if they're going to swing into a seven K, that's way easier to defend than your face or these six Ks that are your uh, blockers that they might be going for. Uh, but yeah. Well, right, guys, that's about it. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you've not already. And uh, please, please by all means, leave your comments down in the section in the comment section below. Uh, these kind of deck, these kind of y'all know I love playing with these different you know off meta style decks uh they're, they're pretty much my favorite thing to do is make these and, and i love doing the it's like commentating over my own games it's, it's kind of like a win-win for me where i get to i get to play the games i get to make these decks out and then you know play them out and see how they run and then i get to commentate over them so all right i'm done rambling i hope you guys enjoyed please don't forget to like and subscribe until next time guys peace